We will now focus on four models of education, see what each model has to offer, how these models are different, and which model would fit our situation the best. The first one is the assimilation model. All we want the child to be able to do in this model is to assimilate, to take in the pieces of information and content that the teacher is trying to share. In this model, the instruction begins with the mother tongue and continues with the national language immersion. What this simply means are two things. One, you start with something the child is familiar with, so the medium of instruction, early years or class one, two, three, whatever, wherever the school begins is in the mother tongue. And then it's the national language immersion, which means everything happens in Urdu. You teach math, you teach science, you teach history, you teach geography in the national language. And immersion, if you look at language and linguistic research, immersion is the best way to learn a language. If you're learning a foreign language, immersing yourself in that culture helps you learn the language better. For example, if you want to learn German, going to Germany, staying there, living there, you hear German, read German, see German, speak German, you will learn German better and faster rather than trying to attend a class and learn from there, or trying to do an online thing today, or trying to listening to cassettes and CDs and videos, and trying to learn a language. So you start with mother tongue, and then you immerse the child in the national language. Because all you want the child to do is assimilate. Take in and understand what the teacher is trying to teach. Pluralistic model is the next one, it recognizes the importance of the language spoken at home. Thus, first language teaching is not restricted only to the early grades. Pluralistic means the language spoken at home is the mother tongue. So, why do it only in the preschool? Why not continue it and do it in the, and beyond the early grades? What the pluralistic approach says is continue mother tongue instruction along after the early years also, in primary, maybe even in secondary. A lot of times, difficult concepts children understand better when it is given in their mother tongue. Although what pluralistic says is you are not simply doing mother tongue instruction. You are teaching Urdu, you are teaching English, you are doing the other languages, but you don't give up on the mother tongue. So, Suddenly, in grade six, the teacher realizes that this science concept is difficult for the children to understand in English or in Urdu. Okay, go to the mother tongue. If you know Punjabi or Sindhi or whatever the mother tongue is, explain it to them in that language. That is the pluralistic model. Keep the different languages going. You may need it. Don't give up. Because unfortunately, in education, what if we say... Mother tongue only in the early years, grade one, no more mother tongue. That's not right. It should continue whenever needed, not all the time, whenever needed, use it to help the child understand better. The immersion model is the next model, which says initial instruction is given in the national language with oral discussion and instruction permitted in the local language. So you start in this case with Urdu. You immerse the child, everything happens in Urdu. But if the child wants to explain something to you and does not have the Urdu vocabulary, the child can use words in his or her mother tongue, which is the local language, to explain that thing to you. But the immersion model puts the child into the language that is being used, Urdu or English, but allows at times for the child to go back to L1, which is the first language, which is the mother tongue, and use it to help make himself or herself understood to the teacher. The national language model is the fourth model, where the sole instruction is in the national language with no teaching in the mother tongue. 
There is no room for mother tongue. Unfortunately, this is the model we focused on so far in our schools. And it has by far hurt our students more than benefiting them. If we only focus on Urdu, the national language, with no room for mother tongue, and then suddenly, three, four years into school life, we also bring in English, it makes life way more complicated for our students. Mother tongue should be encouraged at all levels.